on, it's supernatural. Arrested, beaten, and tortured for his faith by sadistic Middle East terrorists, Jesus rescues an Egyptian Muslim from the horror of death by crucifixion. Do angels exist? Are healing miracles real? Is there life after death? Can people get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 25 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Majid El Shafi. What happens when an Egyptian Muslim finds out that Jesus is the Messiah? The religious police put him in interrogation and try to kill him. His family disowns him. Other Muslims want to kill him. It's not an easy thing. Majid, you come from a family of attorneys, a Supreme Court justice, uh, and you were studying law yourself. How in the world did you make this jump from being a Muslim? And uh, you probably had a terrific future assured with uh, this whole legal family and everything. How did you even begin to think about Jesus in the Bible? It started after I finished my high school. Uh, back in Egypt and I start to study law in Alexandria to become a lawyer and in the first year in Alexandria school I discovered that there is between six to seven thousand Christians Egyptians that they are in jail six to seven to, six thousand to seven thousand and they are in jail for no reason just because they are Christians no there is no another reason there is something in the Egyptian law it's called al khat al hamayuni law it's a law that you cannot build churches. You can build bar, discotheque, but, but not but churches. They, but, but they have churches in Egypt. And old ones, not new ones. I see. And actually by this law that you cannot rebuild or build the, the old ones. So basically what's happened that mm -hmm. you leave the old ones until it's collapsed on itself. So all of this show me that there is something wrong. There is persecution. So you're worried about this problem. How did you then make the leap? to believing in Jesus. I start to research why there is persecution. From my knowledge, when there is a persecution, that means that the enemy tried to hide something, that somebody tried to hide, why mm -hmm. you persecute some people, you know? Uh, well, you have a real legal mind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I went to my best friend, my best friend, his name is Tamir. Tamir was Christian, I was Muslim. And I told him, Tamir, why there is persecution happening to the Christians? And Tamir told me, listen, if I answered you, my answer can affect our friendship together. But I will give you a book. In this book, you will find answer for every question that you have. My first time I opened this book, it was a book about justice and, and, and love and forgiveness more than about law. It's called the Holy Bible. Hmm. And first time I opened the Holy Bible was chapter John 8. And in June 8, they bring a lady commit adultery, flew her in front of the Lord, told him, yes. judge her according to the law of Moses. He started to write down and the sand by his finger. They repeated the question again. The Lord looked at all of them, told them, who without sin cast her the first stone? And the only one who can cast the first stone was the, was the Lord himself, Jesus, because he is the only one having no sin. But he didn't. He, the, she, they left. He looked at the lady, told her, go sin no more, I forgive you. And this was my first time I see true forgiveness. True forgiveness. I, I start to read the Quran, I start to read the, the Bible, I start to compare between both of them. In the end, after almost a year, I went to my friend Tamir and I told him, Tamir, I, want, I know now what is Christianity. Christianity is not about religion. Christianity is not about uh, going to the church every Sunday, hallelujah, bless the Lord, and see the Lord next Sunday. Christianity is about a relationship with God. I accept the Lord and I want to receive Jesus. But you have to count the cost. How could you do that? Your heritage, your family, your no, career. Nothing of that equal anything. If you, are, if you know that your soul in the end will end in, in, in hell. 
Okay, you started an organization to help the Christians in prison and the rights for Christians. Yes. And how large did the organization become in Egypt? Well, we started by seven members, and after that we ended in two years, 24,000. 24,000? In one Okay, in one then he writes a book about what he believes, and uh, he gets arrested. What happened when you got arrested? August 15, 1998. 1.30 in the morning, I heard knock on my door. I went to open the door. An officer asked for a name. I told him, a gentleman asked for a name. I told him nobody here by this name. Two minutes later, five officer, uh, five soldiers, two officers, they came, they broke the door, they took me from the side. They put me in the police station. It's called the Zogli police station. It's behind the Egyptian parliament. They told me, we know who you are. We know about the book that you wrote, the organization that you built. One thing we don't know, that who is the rest of your group? I told them, I don't know which group, I don't know which organization, and if you know everything about me, why are you asking me? <laughs> they told me, you want to play tough, we can play tough together. I told them, tough is my middle name, you have no idea. <laughs> they took me next day to Abu Zab al-Jal. Abu Zab al-Jal known in the Middle East to hell on earth. Mm. And Abu Zab al-Jal, let me just tell you a few information about the persecution system in the Middle East. As the people listening to us now, they have no knowledge about what's happening. And... Um, they, uh, first, they change your name in the official paper. So if your family or any human rights organization ask about you, you're not exist. Really? Uh, in the official papers. Uh, the officers that they are torturing you, they're always wearing masks. You cannot see their faces. They're all, you, they always call each other by numbers, not by names. And every day is with different level of torture. So if you stay... Day number one, they take the, this level of torture. If you didn't speak, they take you to higher level. I spent there seven days. For me, like 700 years. Hold that thought. They end up crucifying him. I'm not kidding. Don't go away. Be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Both Majid El Shafi's supernatural testimony and his documentary expose behind the front line are yours on one high quality DVD for a donation of $25. Shipping is included. Please ask for offer number 1054. On the DVD, you'll hear Majid share from his heart why he left the Muslim faith and became a Christian. You'll be moved to tears as you watch the dramatic recreation of the suffering, torture, and miraculous intervention of God that delivered him from the jaws of death. They condemned me to die, but Jesus gave me life. And on the same DVD, Majid will take you behind the front line of the Israeli-Hezbollah conflict and reveal the truth that the news media is hiding from the American people. You'll see firsthand the suffering of Jewish, Christian, and Arab citizens in Israel at the hands of the Hezbollah terrorist organization. Call now and get both Majid's entire dramatic testimony and his documentary expose behind the front line on this one high-quality DVD for a donation of $25. Shipping is included. Please ask for offer number 1054, or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1054, or log on to SidRoth.org. Don't miss out on getting this DVD. It will change your life forever. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Majid El Shafi. Now, Majid, you said they arrested you because you're living in Egypt. Uh, you are Muslim. You're a law student. You start an organization for uh, Egyptians that believe in Jesus. There, there's all sorts of persecution going on. You write a book. They call you in. They want the names of the other Christians associated with you. You refuse to tell them. And then, did you know that the torture would be as bad as it was, or did you not know this? 